In this video, let's talk about the companies where Manny Pangilinan is chairman of the board. Let's discuss what the charts are telling us. What does the technicals tell us as well? If you have cash, should you buy? If you own the shares, what should you do right now? Let's let the charts tell us. Check this video out. This is Marvin Germo. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and smash that bell so you get updated every time I create new content about the stock market. The road to 100,000 subscribers is now intact. I'm gonna push for it. I'm gonna do it because I really want to see Filipinos. I really want to have a YouTube channel where financial education and investment is in the forefront. So I hope you subscribe. I hope you be part of this road to 100,000. Hey guys, so I'm in a high today because for the past few years, I've been really wanting to meet Manny Pangilinan. And today, I had the chance to have lunch with him where he shared his insights on the market, on business, on life. Life principles, not just with me, but with a lot of content creators as well. The best content creators in the country. It's nice to be with them also during that lunch, lunch period. But anyways, in the vi in in over the next few days, expect that I'll post videos about Manny Pangilinan, his principles on life and in business because I really want you guys to learn a lot from him as well. I really want you guys also to learn from what built him, what made him into a billionaire that he is right now because you have to remember, it's nice to learn from our own experiences. Yes, it's nice to do it. It's nice to be in the trenches. It's nice to... Uh, hustle hard and work hard but it's also nice to learn from the experiences of others and that's what i'm gonna talk about over the next few videos it coming in the next few days but for this video i want to highlight the companies that Manny pangilinan owns the companies where Manny pangilinan is chairman of the board in we're gonna talk about it from a technical analysis perspective please remember this the goal of technical analysis is not for us to guess the goal of technical analysis is that everything you need to know is found in the charts if you want to win you want to trade the markets with confidence that's what technical analysis will teach you that's what technical analysis will push you to do that's why keep on learning keep on hustling for those who want to know more and what technical analysis are links to my books on technical analysis are in the description below you can order order them via shopee or join us for our last stock smart session for the year december 7 8 and 14 which will be in manila so enjoy the rest of the video hey guys so before i go to the stocks or the companies where mani pangilinan is basically involved in let's show you what the index is saying let's show you what the psei is saying also so that at least you have also an inkling on where the broad market is headed so let me po post this resistance levels for uh the psei so that you also have context on the framework of how i'm making this video so this is where the psei is as you all know let me start to zoom in so to zoom in you can see that oops uh, sobra naman sa zoom in but here, here's the thing uh as you notice the psei started to bounce from uh, the October 4 level, uh, it started to go up last October. Last October 4, it started to push. Then it was strong enough that it broke the 200-day moving average. As it started to break the 200-day moving average, it got pinned down by the resistance at the 8,214 level. That being said, selling started to happen. The seven, the 8,000 level did not hold. The 200-day moving average did not hold. But the support at 7,700 protected uh, the PSEI as a whole. So the bounce that we saw... Uh, today, the large upward movement is just pretty much because the PSEI is already at the support level of 77. So, a possible narrative for the PSEI is this uh, we're still moving sideways. It has to break out from the 200 day moving average, but it will attack again the 8,000 level. So, that being said, if the stock starts to, uh, if the stocks fails to break past the 200 day moving average, you can expect it to retrace back to 77. If it breaks past that, then it will go to the 8,000 level. Now, let's go to the Mani Pangilinan stocks. As you, everyone always talks about, if it's Mani Pangilinan, it has to be PLDT, and that's what we will start with. Let's talk about PLDT. Uh, PLDT again is a telco company. I'll try to remove all of this first so that at least you have context also from a short term perspective of where the stock is. So basically, this is how I'll peg it. I will remove this trend line first so it's easier for you to get it. So basically, uh, as you noticed it, as you notice it, uh, since March 2019, 
uh, PLDT hit the support at the 960, 970 level, started to push up, broke past this resistance at 1,050, broke past this resistance at 1,200. But upon reaching 1,3, selling started to happen. That being said, it started to retrace, but the support at the 1,050 level started to hold its ground. Then after hitting that, it hit 1,2, then it started to go down again after hitting uh, those after hitting those resistances. That being said, uh, PLDT basically from August to December is now at a four month, uh, four to five month uh, sideways level, short term sideways level. If I will try to uh, isolate it, the sideways movement is basically underpinned uh, by this. So this is the sideways progression where PLDT is headed. The support is at 1053. The resistance is at 1008. Or you can peg it at either 1200 or 1210. So that's how you can push for it. That's how you can analyze it. Buy as close as you can to 1050. Then as it reaches 1200, 1200, 1210, there might be selling pressure for the short term. That being said though, uh, similar to what I've mentioned a while ago, if... Uh, the 1050 level does not hold. The next support level will be at the 960 uh, peso level. So that's how you can do it. That's how you can look at PLDT on an objective level. You always look at it from support and resistance levels. You always look at it from how can you take advantage? How can you start to push? How can you start to uh, make money off of it? Now, uh, 1050 does not hold. It could drop to 958. But if it bounces off the 950, 955 level, possible uh, possible move, possible narrative is it will bounce and it will hit this. If it if it fails to break past this, then it can retrace down. But if it breaks past that, then you ha there's an expectation that it could possibly go to the 1,300 level for the short term. So that's how I see it. That's what that's our trading plan for PLDT. Please remember again the way for you to make money, the way for you to win is just to follow what your trading plan is. Is just to follow what your strategy is. Also for the stock. That's how you can make money. That's how you can take advantage of whatever volatility is there. Please remember, it's normal for stocks to drop. It's normal for stocks also to move massively up. It's more of a question of what are you supposed to do when stocks are down and what are you supposed to do also when stocks hit certain levels of resistance. Next, let's talk about MPI. MPI, as you've noticed it and as I've been talking about before, MPI is one of the most defensive stocks out there because it has hospitals. Uh, just hospitals it also has uh, uh toll roads it has construction it has manila then it has meralco in the mix so as defensive as it can be now let's try to stretch this further if you notice it this is the progression of mpi you have a support level here somewhere near the four peso level and you have a resistance here somewhere near the 5.3 peso level also for uh for a, a very you can say it's a relatively long period of time because it this this spans no uh since march feb march 2018 so this is something that's like 18 19 20 month sideways movement so we can note that mpi is moving sideways with a with a larger support at 4.1 and a resistance at the 5.3 peso level so if you also notice it from this uh, broad sideways range we are relatively closer already uh to the to this support uh, but if you buy at this level uh you have a possible upside of 20 percent if you if you wait uh, if you buy also at this level this gives you also a possible downside of uh 5.3 percent should it continue to go back to the support as you know me my style is to buy as close as i can to the support as possible because at the support that's where buyers are because at the support that's where you could possibly make more money because you are buying it at a cheaper level so that's how it is from a uh, from a stretch perspective please remember that current trend here is that it's sideways the current trend here is it's not breaking out no higher high no higher low the current trend here it's not also breaking down no no lower high no lower low as well that being said if i'll zoom in also to give you also a shorter perspective from a shorter perspective you can also peg a resistance here but if you notice it also if you place a resistance there suddenly the upside becomes smaller because if you peg it also from this level and you wait no up until the four peso level it will give you a 17.6 upside if you start from this level it gives you a 9.8 upside and a risk also of 5.3 percent so the closest area for you and the area where it gives you 
a stronger sense that there's a lot of buying conviction will be at the 4.15 level for the stock. So that's how you can segment it. That's how you can actually trade it. And that's how you can actually uh, analyze the stock. Next is if it breaks past the 4.85 level, uh, the next possible narrative is, of course, if it bounces from this level and it breaks out from this, the possible movement is that it could possibly go to the next resistance. Please remember, when a stock breaks out from a certain resistance and the, the previous resistance becomes a new support, if it becomes a new support, the possible move is it will try to attack the 5.3 level for the short term. So that's MPI. We have PLDT. We have MPI, both defensive companies. Let's continue and give you more defensive companies. Uh, Mani Pangilinan is also part of Meralco. Let me stretch out where Meralco is now. If you look at where Meralco is, there was a breakdown that happened uh, last uh, November 4, 2019. This was the breakdown. If I'll put another support here, uh, this, places, uh, this places this particular range for Meralco. That being said, let me zoom in here. Meralco is trying to hold on to the 319.7 support level. I repeat, Meralco is trying to hold on to the 319 peso support level. If it bounces off the 319 level, possible move for the stocks, it could go up 9 plus percent. So possible narrative is bounce from 319, it will go here, set your targets at the 347 level. However, if the 319.7 level does not hold, uh, Meralco's next support level is at around 298. Or let's say we can peg it at the 300 peso level also for the stock. So that's how you can that's how you can utilize it. That's how you can maximize it. If Meralco breaks past uh, the 349 level, breaks past that, the next possible target, the next possible area where Meralco could go is the 375 level for the short term so break out from that will bring the stock here at the 375 level uh that being said stays at 320 breaks out from 349 goes to 375 this gives you a possible upside of 17.5 percent as well don't worry since this is a very very defensive stock miralco will never run out of sales miralco will just keep on earning and earning and earning and earning and earning and earning you look at this also from the perspective of the possible dividends that you can get based on the certain prices that you would buy it as well so we we're now at three utility companies or at least three defensive companies you also have to remember mpi owns my milad so uh technically speaking as defensive as you can be uh, those three stocks are relatively defensive now let's go on to other companies that are away from this utilities let's talk about Felix. Uh, Philex basically is uh, a mining company. Uh, this is the range for Philex. You have a support at the 2.86 level and you have a resistance somewhere at the 4.3 level. The range is quite big. So if you buy at 2.9, this gives you a 53.4% 53 upside. So the stock currently is in a downward progression. My recommendation is you wait for it until it becomes relatively cheaper here to the 2.86 level. But if this holds also, you can make a judgment call if you're willing to buy it at a 3 peso, 3.15, 3.2 peso level. And then you could possibly put a short term resistance here at the 3.68 level. 3.68, 3.7 level, this will give you some sort of a 16.2% upside for short term moves. So uh, just to pin it together, a long term move, you have 2.9 uh, support level, target will be at the 4.37 uh, level, which will give you a 53.4 upside. Uh, if you're trading it for the short term, you have 3.17 as a support. Target will be at around 3.7 level. This gives you a 16.2% upside. So that's Felix Mining Corporation. Naman. So uh, very, very large and different companies that Mani Pangilinan would own. Next is, uh, let's look at Petroleum. Uh, Phoenix, you have Phoenix Petroleum here. You have a resistance at the 13.7 level and you have a support at the 10.3 level so for phoenix petroleum this is where it could possibly go this is the possible uh narrative for fee uh for felix petroleum number one if 10.3 does not hold the possible retracement will be at the 6.83 level it could possibly retrace and hit this level but if it bounces from the 10.3 level the next possible target price is at 13.7 our uh, resistance this gives you a target of 33% for the short term. By the way, please remember this. It's been hovering from this range since August 2019. It hit this level uh, last August 2. 
hit the resistance in a month, went back down September, hit the resistance uh, sometime October, now it's back December at that at this support level. So what could you expect? If it stays above 10.3, there's a possibility it goes to 13.7. If 10.3 does not hold, possible support is at the 6.85 uh, level as well. So you, what you do is you base it from uh, risk and reward ratio. Please remember also your areas where you need to cut if those support ranges does not hold. Because for me, that's the most important. It's not just about where you enter. It's about how you exit trading. The market is all about risk management trading. The market is also about putting as much volume as you can to certain stocks where you have the highest conviction in. Because the money money and winning in the market is all about you allocating as much as you can to certain stocks that give you the right, uh, the right buy signals and that's where you can position and win for the long term. Lastly, I want to talk about Ron's Holdings. Uh, uh, Mani Pangilinan is not basically the... Uh, Mani Pangilinan basically is not the, not the chairman of the board here. I think he's the vice chairman. So, But let's just add it since he's part of the executive committee so that at least you have context. Uh, as you notice it also, it's not as... Uh, it doesn't have as much... It doesn't have as much liquidity as the other stocks that I've shown you as you can see on how the chart or how the candlesticks are formed. But basically, uh, you have a support as close as you can to 1.86. You have your resistance at 2.3. Breaks out from 2.3, the next possible target is at the 2.5 level. So did you guys learn a lot? I hope you did. I hope that you guys got a firm grasp also of the technicals of the stock. Expect a couple of videos with Manny Pangilinan there, his insights on business, his insights on how you can grow and how you can do well and how you can be not not just like him but be your own self but learning from the principles that he has used on how he has climbed the ladder of success became a good business person and from where he was before how he was able to become a very very successful person so that's it for now i hope you guys learned a lot from this as well comment below if you want me to make other videos on stocks on business on anything else in between and i'll just keep on making them because the heart of this channel uh, from the start is just to educate you so that you can win it's just time for more and more and more and more filipinos to actually win so that's it for now i hope this video helps you trade well trade strong trade smart marvin germo see you all again soon guys and god bless you all